Hey everybody, J-Mac here with more Interior Tech. Today we're going to be showing you how to remove your center console. Now removing your center console is necessary to gain access to your shifter or even your uh, just your lower shifter boot. Now it is a little involved so follow along and we'll show you step by step what needs to be done. We're going to start by removing your center console armrest. Go ahead and pop off your oval plug and grab you a 5 16 or 8 millimeter socket and you can remove the two bolts on each side that hold the armrest onto the console. Repeat that process for the other side. I've already have ours done so you can just pick straight up on the armrest and it'll come free of the console set it out of the way and we'll move up here to the shifter handle just pop up your shifter boot and bezel and you can just pick it up and then remove the two bolts that hold on your shifter handle now every shifter is going to have a different piece of hardware holding it on so you're going to use anywhere from a 10 millimeter to 13 millimeter socket or even a uh, allen head socket for some aftermarket shifters now you just remove those two bolts to get that handle out of the way. Then go ahead and remove your AC trim bezel. It just snaps out of place really easily. And grab you a set of radio removal tools. If you still have the stock radio, we have these available on our website. If you've got an aftermarket radio in your car, you have uh, four screws holding in the adapter plate. So you can pull those four screws out to gain access to the back of the radio. Engage those into place. Pull out and straight back on the radio. You can unplug your antenna and then your two electrical connectors from the back. Set that out of the way. Now we can move on over here to the driver's side. You're going to have to remove your lower column cover. It's held on by two Phillips head screws. Got one over here by the uh, key release button. Get it out of the way. And then one over here, right underneath the lock cylinder. And then your lower column cover comes free. And make sure and keep your screws with it because you don't want to be hunting around for screws later. Now your plastic cover, uh, trim cover for the bottom of the dash, it's held on at the bottom with three screws and it's got two push clips up here. Uh, this car is already missing one screw, 5 16 or 8 millimeter head. Go ahead and pull those out of the way. and grab hold of the panel and pull straight back to disengage the clips. You can set it out of the way. And then you've got this metal trim piece. It's held on again with two uh, bolts. It's got uh, either 5 16 or 8 millimeter head. You want to pull those out of the way. Then that metal plate comes free. Now you'll want to drop your glove box, open it up, and then push in on both sides, and then it'll completely fall down because you have two Phillips head screws on this side and two Phillips head screws on this side that you need to remove.
Now you can go ahead and remove the two Phillips head screws at the front of the console top panel. Then the two Phillips head screws at the back of the console top panel. Pull up on your e-brake handle and you can take your console top panel up and off. Then disconnect your two electrical connections, one for the cigarette lighter and then the other one for the power mirror switch if your car is equipped. And then your console top panel is free. Now you have two more Phillips head screws at the back of the console that need to come out. And now your console is free. Lower your e-brake handle back down, pick up on the back of the console, and pull straight back. Lift up, and you've got an electrical connector over here for your uh, trunk release. It simply pops out of place, and your console is free from the car. Now to reinstall your console, you would just simply reverse these removal steps. For more interior restoration videos, check out latemodelrestoration.com.